To understand what's going on between Israel and Palestine, you must first understand the history of that land and its original inhabitants. Before the nation of Israel was an established country, it was a nation of people from one specific family bloodline. The progenitor, the forefather of this particular family, his name is Abraham. Both the Israelis and the Palestinians believe that Abraham was promised by God to have the land that we know as Israel today. This is mentioned in Genesis the 12th chapter verses 1 to 3. Also Genesis chapter 13 verse 15 and Genesis chapter 15 verses 18 through 21. Scholars often refer to this promise to Abraham for the land of Israel as the so-called Abrahamic covenant. Again, this promise, this covenant with Abraham would be passed down to his descendants. The records and the scriptures specify that this covenant would be passed down to Abraham's son, Isaac. This is very important because Abraham had a son before Isaac whose name was Ishmael. If you talk to many Arabs today and many Muslims today, they will tell you that they believe that they are the descendants of Ishmael, which is true. The problem is the promise, the covenant was not passed down to Ishmael. It was passed down to Isaac. This is proven in Genesis chapter 17, verses 18 through 21. Verse 20 reads, And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac. Because the Arabs come from Ishmael, that would mean that they are now disqualified from the promise that was made with Abraham pertaining to the land that we know as Israel. But wait, there's more. We just established that Isaac is the rightful heir to the inheritance, the promise, which includes the land. So now we got to find out who gets it after Isaac. According to the biblical records, Isaac had two sons whose names were Esau and Jacob. You can find this in Genesis chapter 25, verses 19 to verse 34. So again, we have the situation where there are two sons. Who receives the inheritance? Well, thankfully, we have the records that tells us who received the covenant out of the two sons of Isaac. When you go to Genesis chapter 28, verse 13, it tells you, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. So right here, the scriptures are establishing that out of Isaac's two sons, Jacob and Esau, Jacob would be the one to receive the inheritance that was passed down from Abraham, Isaac, and now Jacob. Here's where things start to really get discombobulated because of the many lies and the whitewashing of history. The people of Israel today are not the descendants of Jacob. They are, in fact, the descendants of Esau, the nation of Edom. That would mean that the Israelis are also disqualified from having a rightful claim to that land. I know some of y'all are like, what are you saying? So are you telling me the Israelis and the Palestinians don't have a rightful claim to that land that we know is Israel today? Yes. The rightful heirs to the land of Israel are the descendants of Jacob. Now we have to find out who are the descendants of Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So when you read in the Bible about Jacob and Israel, it's the same person. Jacob, Israel, had 12 sons. These are the names of Israel's 12 sons right here. From these 12 sons is where you get your 12 tribes of Israel. This has nothing to do with religion at all. This is all about, once again, the records of one particular family, one particular bloodline. So now that means that the 12 tribes of Israel are the rightful owners of the land of Israel. When you fast forward in time, you'll see that from those 12 sons Israel had sprouted an entire nation of people. 
this family, this nation migrated to Egypt because of the famine that was in all of the land. You can read this with the story of Joseph. I'm speeding you up for time's sake. So after migrating to Egypt, the children of Israel grew and grew in number. They became a more and more powerful nation within the nation of Egypt. The Egyptians were very fearful and jealous of the Israelites and started to oppress the Israelites. Once again, you can read this in Exodus chapter one. It tells you about how the Israelites built all the great cities and pyramids all throughout Egypt, not as free citizens, but as slaves. Here's why this is very important. The children of Israel lived, served, and slaved in Egypt for roughly 400 years. And the archeology span proves this. In the Life Magazine from April 5th, 1968. You can look right here, the date is circled with the red. Just to verify, this is an actual magazine from 1968. You will find that there are images of the children of Israel who served in slavery in Egypt. Here's another one right here. And here's another one. When you look at all of these images, what you'll find out and realize is that the children of Israel, AKA the Jews or the Israelites or the Hebrews, they are all depicted as brown skin or black people in the Egyptian artifacts and archeology. span So now we just got some very crucial information regarding the children of Israel. According to the records and all the archeology, span they would have to be dark-skinned people. But don't just take my word for it. Here's further proof. This is the Zondervan Pictorial Bible Dictionary. And when you go to the definition of the word ruddy, you would find out that it says a word used to refer to a red or fair complexion in contrast to the dark skin of the Hebrews. So now we've established that the Jews, the children of Israel, the descendants of Jacob are dark skinned people. Let's get back to the history. Moses led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Many people are familiar with the story. The Israelites walked through the dry land of the Red Sea when the Red Sea was split. There is no concrete evidence to show what exact route did the children of Israel take coming out of Egypt. But here are a few maps of the different possibilities. Coming out of the land of Egypt, the children of Israel being led by Moses came into what today is called the Sinai Peninsula. According to the biblical records, it is here where the children of Israel, the Jews would wander for 40 years until eventually coming into the land that was promised to their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the promised land y'all like this video and leave a comment for part two we're gonna get all the way up to date on how this all relates to what's going on in the land of israel today